Hi everybody, welcome to the next in the She Smith Lives Facebook series. Um, I'm Danielle Owens, I head up the recruitment team here at She Smith. And I'm Dawn Gillard, I'm a recruitment advisor here at She Smith. And today we're going to be spending a little bit of time talking to you about our NQ recruitment process. So it feels a long way off right now when you're looking for training contracts, but if you're at that position when you've got the elusive training contract and now it's time to start thinking about the qualification role, hopefully the content that we'll be sharing with you today will help with that process. So um, today we're here in Birmingham, uh, sunny Birmingham today, so let us know where you are, drop us a little line in the comments box, give us a, a shout out for which cities you're in, it's great to see where everyone's listening from today. Um, during this session we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about our NQ process, starting to start with that, what the recruitment process looks like, how we manage that internally with our, our current second year trainee cohort. We'll then share with you how we recruit externally, because um, not all of our vacancies get filled through the internals. We usually have more jobs than we have people, which is a good position to be in. Um, we'll share with you some interview tips that you can take into your NQ interviews, but also look at how you can help yourself um, find roles externally if you find yourself in that situation. So thinking there about how you might work with the recruitment agencies um, in your local cities to help find positions. We'll make sure we have some time at the end to answer any questions that you've got, but please do um, pop some comments on the, on the comments section there and write any questions down and we'll be sure to come back and answer those if we can. Okay, then we film our Facebook Live videos really simply. Um, we're just in a room today in Birmingham with a, with a camera and a very small mic, so please do give us a thumbs up just to let us know that you can all hear us okay. Yeah. Thanks. Good. Okay, so um, that's enough about us. Um, if you want to sort of start now thinking about next steps and, and this stage in your career, when you start looking for your NQ job, what to do first. Um, I thought it would be helpful if we outline the process here at Shoesmiths first of all. Um, you've probably seen from other videos that we've watched, that we've put out there, that we have um, six, six month seats, four six month seats throughout our training contract. So as you go through your training contract, you'll be watching the associates above you and the partners and really starting to build up a picture of what areas you're interested in, what areas suit your skill set, and thinking about where ultimately you might like to qualify. Um, you might be in a lucky situation that actually you've enjoyed all your seats and have got a choice of things that you'd be interested in looking at, or um, you might find that some really do stand out. We often find with our trainees, they tend to have a preference of maybe two areas that, that are particularly of, of focus for them and where they want to concentrate their career. Um, so at this point in the year we've already started talking to our second year so for us that typically starts around February just before they go into their final seat in March um, we start asking what their preferences are what cities they might be interested in working in whether they're flexible or open to relocating to another location and at the same time we also talk to the business so where are the vacancies likely to be where do our practice groups our divisions foresee um, there being growth opportunities or new roles coming up and um, what, what volume of positions might they have. Now as I said, um, it's generally speaking we've had more roles than, than trainees which is a really lovely position to be in but it's sometimes challenging to match them up so it's helpful to kind of do this due diligence in the background first so we understand where everybody's looking for and um, what we're going to need them for. Um, then around March we get those vacancies approved at the end of March so they all go to our board in our budget process and everything is signed off and then we release those vacancies to our internal candidates. Um, that comes out end of March, beginning of April and we then invite them to apply for opportunities. Now at Shoesmiths, this might be different in different firms, but for us at Shoesmiths, we actually say that trainees can apply for any roles. It doesn't matter if you have done a seat in that department or not. Um, you might be interested in banking, but for one reason or another didn't get a banking seat, but have done corporate restructuring or have done corporate and think actually you've still got some really good strong skills to match across. You can still apply for that banking position if that's your first choice. Um, so there's lots of um, opportunity to apply for different things. And you can also apply for roles in different locations. That that might be different in other firms but that's certainly how we do things here. Um, for us I guess our trainees are, are of the standard of being an NQ at the firm because we've assured that that's happened through their training contract, it's part of our job and part of their development um, so they are welcome to apply to anything. The world is that oyster. <laughs> Um, once we've had all the applications back in, then we will look to schedule interviews uh, with the relevant hiring managers. There's usually two people in an interview, perhaps a partner and an associate, or maybe two partners or a member of the recruitment team or HR team might sit in on those interviews with, um, with the candidates and with a partner. Um, typically it will be a standard competency style interview, talking about their experience. Before the interview, we will share with the hiring partner 
any seat review documents, any feedback that we've had for the trainee over the, the two years, um, and trainees are invited to do a CV. Now this isn't something that's mandatory, it's completely optional, um, but actually most do tend to find that's quite useful. Yeah. I think from an individual point of view it helps to focus your mind on um, actually what you've achieved over the last two years and put it all down in one, one piece of paper. You can really draw out the most relevant areas of your experience for each role that you apply for. You might find that you have a few different CVs if you're interested in a few different areas of law. But anyway, the CVs go forward to the loan manager so they can have a good review if there are there with the seat uh, documentation, seat review documentation, and then that interview will take place. Um, the interviews are fairly standard. We don't usually have any presentations or, or sort of tasks and things to take people sort of off in a direction that they weren't expecting. It will all be um, fairly standard, uh, but just about assessing suitability for the role and, and for that team and that opportunity. Um, we then notify the successful candidates and give every applicant feedback. Um, that usually happens first few weeks in May. Um, and then if necessary, if we haven't filled all of our positions, then we would look to take any remaining vacancies to the external market. So this is now a good time for me just to talk through um, our external recruitment process. So um, as Danny's mentioned, once we've finished the internal process, we will then look to advertise our vacancies externally so that we can receive applications from anyone that hasn't trained with us. Um, and typically that would involve us advertising our vacancies on our website, on LinkedIn. Mainly we, we start with our, our own website first and through LinkedIn because ideally we would like to fill our vacancies directly. So if you are watching this today and you are um, interested in some NQ vacancies then do please link in with myself on LinkedIn. It's a good way to start. You'll then see any of our vacancies as and when I share them or like them on LinkedIn you'll get to see them but do keep an eye on our careers page because they are also on the vacancy site of our website as well. Um, typically they'll be out for a couple of weeks where we try to fill things directly as I've said in the first instance. If that hasn't been successful then we'll look to fill them through agencies and through agency hiring. Um, but when, as and when CVs come in we'll review them, we'll send them on to the partners, hiring partners in the team to review. They will then invite some of the candidates in for interview and we always operate a two-stage interview process. So initially that will be with one partner in the team and maybe an associate or someone from the recruitment team. Um, and then there would also be a second stage interview process after that and there may well then be a further meeting to have drinks or socialise and, and meet people in the team slightly more informally as well. Um, we will then look to make an offer for those vacancies as soon as we can, as soon as we've had that two stage process. Again we do try, try and get things done quite quickly because we do understand how busy and how quickly things move in the NQ market um, around this time because it's such a busy time for the market in all of our locations yeah, that we're so based. So that's a very quick whistle stop tour of both yeah. the internal and the external recruitment And you'll see process. they're actually very similar. I think that's important to point out. There's no kind of different route if you're internal or external. It's exactly the same. Probably the only addition is that that sort of social aspect maybe at the end. And that's partly about us showing you what the culture's like in the firm and, and why it would be a great place for you to work here because we tend to find the best candidates get multiple offers. So um, that's just an opportunity for you to feel comfortable with the people you're going to be with every day. Absolutely. Um, and so that probably leads us quite nicely on to some interview preparation tips. So this will work quite nicely for any internal interviews that you have as well as any external interviews that you're looking to have. Um, as Danny's mentioned, for any internal process we wouldn't typically necessarily say that you would have to have a CV prepared. Obviously for an external application you would need to have a CV prepared because you'll be applying to and speaking to a firm that don't know you, haven't seen you yet for a six month, four month period, whatever it has been over the course of your training seat. Um, so you will need to have that CV prepared and applied um, and what we would say is that when you are preparing for your interview, whether that's internal or external, it is going to be an interview. So when it's an internal process you may well know some of the partners slightly better, so it may well feel slightly more informal than some of the other interviews that you're used to having, but it is very much still an interview so they will still be asking some of the technical questions to make sure you can still remember those deals and transactions and processes <coughs> that you've gone through as part of your training seat. Um, but they may not ask quite as many questions as when you go for an external process. So it is really important that you do prepare yourself. Think back over the course of your seat, everything that you've done, what you found perhaps challenging, what you really enjoyed, um, and how you can see yourself fitting in there and why you would like to um, practice that area of law in particular for the rest of your career, because that's, that's quite a long time. <laughs> so make sure, <laughs> make sure you've thought that one through. Um, but then the other really important 
piece of advice when you are preparing for your interviews. And again, that this is definitely, whether it's an internal application or an external process, make sure you've thought about the questions you would like to ask the team. Mm -hmm. So even when you have sat in the team for perhaps six months over the course of a training seat, make sure you've thought about things that you'd like to ask, particularly around, say, what are there any chargeable hours targets? If there are, what are they? What would the team expect for you over the next six to 12 months? So your first six to 12 months as a qualified solicitor. Um, what are the particular work streams that might be coming in? Have they landed a new client or a new deal that you can see that you would be able to be work on as a solicitor with them? And anything like that, that that you think would be really important for you to know. It's your chance, it's your opportunity. You're sat there with a partner or a few people from yeah. the team. It really is the best opportunity to see where, where the team's going, what's going to be happening over the next two, three years, because you will be a, quite mm -hmm. an important part of that. So you need to know what's coming up and what's going on. So that's a really good chance for you. So do make sure you take the time to sit and think about those questions that you want to ask as well. Mm. Um, and the final piece of advice I would say for your interview preparation is really to just speak to the recruitment team, speak to other people that you know of. So if you are making any app applications externally, speak to your friends. Where do they work? How have they found things? So that you can really make the most informed decisions that you can. Um, but also just don't be afraid to ask those questions of people and, and speak to people in your network um, and make sure that you are speaking to your friends, you've got that supportive network around you, so make sure you use it. Yeah, that's a very, very good point, very valid to say. I think using your network is something that you'll find um, very helpful at this point in the, in the, the cycle, because as Dawn said earlier, NQ recruitment does move exceptionally fast and um, sometimes roles will come up and it's a little bit almost fastest finger first to get the CVs in really quickly. Cause there's always a pressure to, to try and hire the vacancies before everyone goes on holiday for summer. Um, so that kind of period, once we go external from sort of May to, to, to June, is, is really when you want to be around and want to have your ear to the ground and want to be talking to those in your network to hear about opportunities and to make sure that you're getting your best application in quickly. So though, if you're interested in applying to us, as Dawn said, yeah, it's shameless plug time, you can <laughs> connect with us on LinkedIn and do make sure you follow our pages on Twitter as well so you'll see when the vacancies do get released and when we start to push those out. And there are actually a couple there live now at the moment as well, so we do find that through the year NQ opportunities do come up and of course we don't just wait and think, well, we'll just leave that team without someone for six months. We'll start hiring um, through that way. We've actually managed to qualify nine of our second years early this year, so um, that's brilliant news and we're great, grateful to retain all of them in those roles um, and we've still got some really strong figures looking ahead to how many vacancies we'll have for September so lots of opportunities and um, so that's really really positive um, but if you do find yourself in that situation then when you decide that you do need to look externally for opportunities maybe there isn't the role that you really want in your firm you've got your heart set on a particular practice area or a particular location and the opportunity just doesn't marry up with what you want and, and where the firm needs you to be whichever firm you're at then um, don't despair because lots of people do find themselves in a very very similar situation and um, the market is, is looking from what I hear so far from talking to our recruitment agents like it should be a fairly buoyant summer uh, so opportunities around but there are some really good things you can be doing now just to prepare yourself for sort of approaching that external market should you need to. Um, the first piece of advice I would say is, is to really, as, as Dawn said earlier, really do give some thought to the areas of law you're interested in and push yourself and challenge yourself to, to broaden your horizons and your, your expectations. Um, those candidates that secure the best opportunities are the ones that have the biggest degree of flexibility. Um, that might be on different technical areas or it might be on different geography, um, whether you could relocate, whether you could look at opportunities in different cities, if you live in the middle of two perhaps, um, that, that's going to give you more opportunities to consider and will end up with you getting a, the best job for you at the end of it. Um, of course you'll have a first choice and a preference and that's absolutely fine to hold on to that and to really make that your focus but don't um, don't sort of shut the door on other opportunities that come along for say your second choice location or your second choice area you could still find that you could be applying for those second choice areas and then um, before you accept anything another great first choice opportunity comes along but if that hadn't happened and you'd not applied to the, the great second choice option that came along then you've missed out because that will go that role and that will be filled quite quickly so do think about being flexible having a backup plan and executing that backup plan early enough yeah. Um, don't wait till August because all the best jobs will likely have gone and most of the firms will complete their recruitment cycle earlier. Mm -hmm. um, 
Look at the firms that are of interest to you though. Culturally, what sort of firms do you align with? Technically, what work is there available? What clients are you interested in working for? And where can you get that? And then reach out to us and speak to people like us, speak to their in-house recruitment teams, speak to their HR, their partners, whoever, your, your colleagues and friends in different locations, different firms, to, to ask the questions about what roles they have available now, or, or if they haven't started yet, when do they start looking at their external NQ hiring? Most firms, like Shoesmiths, will want to retain all of their own internal qualifiers um, and get 100% retention uh, as quickly as possible. Of course that's got to be our aim with the, the time and investment that we spend training these great people, we want to keep them. So it's only really after that process is complete that most firms will start to consider external applications. So find out when that happens. So for us that's around mid-May, second week in May, but for other firms that might be later, it might be earlier, but if there are organisations that are of interest, now is the time to do your homework and to be finding out what their processes are in the same way that we're sharing ours. Um, you might I also want to look at registering for job alerts. You can do that on our website yeah. or with other um, websites like Route One or, or The Lawyer, um, and other, I'm sure other organisations have similar um, job alerts on their websites too. And you might also like to start thinking about recruitment agencies um, mm -hmm. and who, if any, that you choose to partner with. Uh, more and more firms like, like She's Miss have big in house recruitment teams now, and we're more than happy and able to, to do a lot of our hiring direct. But there are also some brilliant recruitment agents out there who still work with a lot of firms, us included, um, and as Dawn said, we, we will go to them if we can't secure roles um, and fill roles ourselves. So start getting to know the agents in the cities or the, the geographies of wherever you are interested in working. Who are the key players? Who has the best relationships? Again, you can ask for recommendations from, from friends and colleagues. Um, you can attend lots of them will be running NQ events like um, the trainee solicitors groups and those sorts of things. They'll often hold um, NQ events right now, so you can go along to those, hear from them a bit about what the market's doing in that location and how to sort of go about applying for roles and how to register with those agents. See who you like and trust, um, because there are lots of agents and they're all, there are lots of really, really good agents across the cities that we're based in, but you, you do not need to have hundreds of different relationships for different things. It gets really confusing and lots of them are all working on the same jobs. So think about what you expect in a trusted advisor and which agents can demonstrate those qualities and that values match for you. That's certainly how we look at things. Um, and then think about how you build rapport with that person, how to build a relationship. So. Um, I'd suggest meeting them, definitely, if they're going to be representing you to other organisations. Um, you want their advice and their feedback on the CVs that you've prepared. Ask for what hints and tips they can give you as well. I mean, that's part of the service they can offer. Um, they can't rewrite your CV, that's down to you and you have to put the hard work in. They don't know what you've done. But through that first meeting, talk to them about your experience, talk to them about key, key highlights from your, your seats and your experience so far, and get them to help you expand on that from a CV point of view, to give you the strongest CV you can. Um, they can also generally help with things like interview preparation and so again mock interviews might be something that's worth doing we've done that in the past with, with people here at Shoesmiths and certainly lots of recruiters will offer that service if that's something probably you haven't had an interview since you might have been at university and applied for a training contract so um, it can be sort of well four years away I guess since, since some of your recent interviews so do take up those opportunities if they, they offer them to, to do some mock interview practice um, but most importantly when you are dealing with agents particularly if it's more than one make really really good notes for who talks to you about which opportunities because as I said lots of the agents will work with the same clients, the same roles, and it can get super confusing as to who was it that spoke to me about that role at She's Miss or that role at this firm. <laughs> Just keep really accurate records because what you don't want is for your CV to end up going to a firm twice but through different sources. We can sort it out, it's fine if it happens, it's not the end of the world, but it is logistically it just adds a level of like admin that can be avoided with careful planning and preparation and just control at the end of the day this is your personal document your personal data your CV you don't just want that sprayed around the market you want it to be managed in a consultative way so make sure you partner with an agent that can do that and be committed to you on that and make sure you keep notes as to who is doing what for you because um, as Dylan said when it when it gets going the market can move really fast so that's definitely a top tip um, and then again, just to reiterate the point from earlier, do try and be really open-minded, do try and keep that plan B. Um, if, you have, if you have a plan B, I recommend you do, but do try and keep it 
going through the summer don't just wait to the end of the summer and think okay I've not got plan A now I need to look at plan B because if it just so happens that you're interested in an area um, employment's a, a popular one isn't yeah. it lots of people often want to qualify into employment over the last few years there haven't been lots of jobs in employment in any cities or locations which has meant there's a surplus of people going for those opportunities it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with those people it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with the jobs there's just a mismatch in terms of balance and the numbers don't stack up so don't wait till the end of the summer before you realize that take the advice of your agents take the advice that we're saying today and do have your plan b particularly if they tell you that what you're looking for is in quite short supply this season for whatever reason um yeah be, go for what you want but be open-minded yeah absolutely i think there's a couple of other tips yeah that we would probably like to impart to you just to think about when coming up to the qualification process and I think one of them is if you've really got your heart set on one particular department in one particular location, don't be afraid to speak to the partners in that team, just to mention it to you, your previous supervisor, other people in the team, to make them aware that that is an area you are really interested in. Um, if there's a couple, then perhaps that might not be the, the best way forward, but if there is one particular department that you really have your heart set on, don't be afraid to speak to people so they are aware, because when it comes to... Um, looking at budgets and if they they do have budgets for an extra solicitor it's good to know that there is definitely someone that would be applying for that vacancy in that role and that is you um, so don't be afraid to do that and, and to stay in touch with people across the course of your training contract so don't be afraid to keep touching base with people it really helps for your internal network as well as then when qualification time comes around you've really spoken to people you've really reminded yourself of everything that you've done in each department, the types of clients they have, where you really think you could see yourself for the next 5, 10, 15 years, as we said before. So don't be afraid to keep popping those coffees in the diary just to catch up with various people over the course of your training contract to really put yourself in the best position come the end of, uh, of your training and come qualification. Okay. So thank you all for listening. I hope that's been helpful. If you think it has, please just hit the little wow face. Show us some love, give us some <laughs> thumbs up. Um, and we've got a number of questions that have already come in. So if you've got any more questions, do, um, do please just pop those on the comment section. And we'll get to those shortly. If we run out of time, then we'll always answer them after the, after the show. But right, so questions first of all. We had one artist before the live video went live. What do you do to prepare trainees for qualifying? Okay, so that's a really good question. Uh, we start talking about qualification on the trainee induction week. So um, I come in and we do a little bit really early on actually just to sort of say that this is the process and this is the timing and this is what happens. But when they get sort of into the second year, um, we actually do a NQ preparation day. So we gather all of our second years together into the Birmingham office typically. We'll be here, uh, I think it's next week. So um, that's coming up next Wednesday. We'll have all our second years together and we'll just sit down with them very similarly to this actually and just walk through line by line what the um, qualification process is. Now what we haven't done today is talk about the SRA process to actually qualify. That's a whole nother video and probably not my bag, but we, we, we do that with our internals. So we'll sit down and talk them through how they, how they qualify first of all, but also what the recruitment process looks like. Now at that meeting, we share that early indication of vacancies that I mentioned earlier. So this is a sort of a, the, the list from our practice group heads, our divisional heads, of where they anticipate the vacancies to be, what the numbers look like, what technical areas we're likely to recruit for. And we go through that with them. It's really open, it's really transparent, it's, um, everyone can see it and everyone knows what's coming. When the vacancies are then signed off in March, we then um, issue them formally, sorry, April, when they're signed off by the board and the budgets are approved, then we issue the formal vacancies. But we've already given them that early indication so they know roughly what's coming. Um, and that's so that's probably the key part really that preparation day we also pulled together FAQ documents so that they can learn from the questions from previous year groups um, the recruitment team are on hand so there's 12 of us in the recruitment team that shoots this now <laughs> quite big so there's plenty of people around if they want support on CVs or um, if, if for example they do decide they're not going to be staying with us for any reason and they want some help looking at the external market then again we, we will help with that too because ultimately we want to get the best opportunities for people if they're not staying with us mm -hmm. um, then we'll help them externally too if necessary. Okay, um, another question here from Lauren on Facebook. How can I find the current vacancies to apply for? They are on our website, so we have a careers page on our website and we have a little tab for current vacancies and you can filter that either by location or practice area, but everything that we have, it's, it's a moving feast, but everything that we have live that we're recruiting for is always advertised on our website, so definitely 
after you've had a watch of this, go and have a look just to see what we're looking for at the moment um, because it's all there live on the website. We also advertise on LinkedIn, but the website is the best comprehensive um, place really for you to have a look at our current vacancies. And on the website as well, on the careers page, you'll find lots of hints and tips for um, how to prepare for your interview, where our offices are, some news articles, some background information that you might find really helpful to sort of put into your application or certainly to prepare for any interviews that come up. Um, another question here on Facebook, do you mark the qualification date with anything special like a graduation day? Yes, we do. So we have the um, Enki preparation day in March, which is next week, as we said, and then we have a, um, a team celebration. So once they've all qualified and they're all in their, um, their newly qualified positions, we absolutely do mark that. So they usually get a gift something that often comes in little blue boxes with white ribbons, if the jewellery people out there will be familiar with those, um, which is lovely. <laughs> and there's normally some champagne and either our chairman or our CEO will come along and just have a sort of celebration in the office. We also have um, a thing called team brief in our offices um, mm -hmm. across the country. Every month the office head will get everybody in the site together just to talk about news and updates, client wins, that kind of thing, promotions. And we always make a point of um, highlighting the recent qualifications and newly qualified to, uh, who stayed with us and got through their training contract at the end of two young long years so yeah we absolutely do mark it they also get the opportunity to attend the Lord Society Day as well if um, they do want to to go along for their graduation day um, so that's something else that people can take that usually happens a little bit later than the actual qualification and of course perhaps most importantly there's a lovely email that comes out from my team and from Sam Hope who's our grad rep manager we're always really delighted and chuffed to get them qualified and over the line um, Lizzie Gagan next has asked, what's the trainee retention rate at Sheesmiths? Okay, so um, I don't have it off the top of my head. It fluctuates slightly year to year, but typically it sits at around 70 to 75%. Um, as I said, we aim to retain 100% of our trainees. That's yeah. got to be the aim. Otherwise, why would we do this? And um, over the, I've been here six years now. I've been head of recruitment at Sheesmiths. And in all of those years, we've had more vacancies than we have had trainees. The challenge sometimes comes with us. We've got 12 offices, and so you might have maybe two trainees in our Manchester office or two trainees in Edinburgh, um, but more jobs in maybe Birmingham because Birmingham's growing quicker, or Leeds as at one of our new sites. So it's sometimes matching up geographically where the roles are with where people are, and people can't always move at this point in their life. They might have a house, a mortgage, a partner, dependents, who knows? Um, and then also matching that with the technical areas that people want. So sometimes that can be quite a challenge. So we don't necessarily keep everyone that we would like to, um, but I'm pleased to say, I mean, like some of those that leave us, so like two last year went to clients, went in-house, so that's, that was great and they're still in touch. Um, and so it's still good to sort of keep in touch and see, see where they go with their careers next. Okay, I don't think we've got any further questions just yet. No, nothing further. But if anyone does think of anything else, by all means pop a question in the comments. We do um, monitor those and we'll come back and, and answer those and, uh, directly to you. Um, just a, a huge shout out for all of you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it's been helpful. Um, once again, give us some love on the Facebook heart. <laughs> My little cheesy things. <laughs> <laughs> so we know that this has been useful and helpful. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your questions and your participation as well. Be sure to head over to our Facebook events page to sign up for the next Facebook Live that will be coming up um, later on, sorry, early April. Um, so do make sure you sign up for that. And we look forward to seeing you watching again and hopefully getting some NQ applications from some of you if that's appropriate for you now. Yep, so if you okay. are going through the process, good luck. Good luck. all goes well. Cool. We hope this has been really helpful. Don't forget, do link in with us as well on LinkedIn. Do you find us on LinkedIn. Yep. In. So if you're looking for any other opportunities, we can hopefully help with that. But thank you very much for watching. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye. Yeah.